Today, Intel absolutely threw down the gauntlet against AMD and Nvidia, uh, claiming the absolute best in class performance per dollar in the price class where most people are actually buying. If you look at the Steam hardware survey, most people are hanging out on GPUs that, that have MSRPs at or below $300, and many of them well below $300. So Nvidia, um, uh, you know, with an RTX 4060 coming in at 299 and occasionally being like $10 off, uh, offering an eight gigabyte card, well, suddenly you're gonna be getting a 12 gigabyte option uh, from Intel over here. So if we look at these specs, this is pretty exciting. So Intel's offering the B580 with 12 gigabytes of VRAM and the B570 with 10 gigabytes of VRAM. So no eight gigabyte cards here because they're acknowledging that games designed around current consoles are designed with more than eight gigabytes of VRAM in mind. And especially if you're playing at higher resolutions, they're focusing on 1440p results here. Uh, th that can definitely come into, uh, you, know, you know, question there. And the release dates here, by the way, are December 13th for the $249 B580 and January 16th for the $219 B570. They focus mostly on the performance numbers for the B580 right now because that's the one coming out now, uh, whereas the B570, I imagine they'll make more performance claims when it gets closer to January 16th. Anyway, let's come back to this slide though, because this being first party results, we need to be very, very careful because you might look at this slide and say, wow, the B580 is 32% faster than the RTX 4060. And I actually myself made that mistake when I first glanced at this until we wait, wait a minute, this is performance per dollar. Performance per dollar, not overall performance. So they're saying that it costs less so it's helping it uh, boost its performance per dollar advantage. And again, ray tracing performance per dollar, they're claiming a win over the RTX 4060. But what about just in uh, raw performance? Also, another place that this can be a little bit misleading is the settings being tested, because we're looking at 1440p Ultra, which can spill over eight gigabytes of VRAM which means it's a legitimate advantage for the B580 to have more than eight gigabytes of VRAM, but it's also the case that, it, that if you test it at more reasonable settings for an eight gigabyte card, I'm wondering if some of that performance headroom uh, evaporates in certain games. Uh, so for example, if we're looking at the actual claimed performance advantage, if we're not looking at performance per dollar, they're actually claiming the B580 is 10% faster on average versus the 4060, uh, occasionally slower, but they're showing a lot of games where it's a lot faster. Some of them significantly faster, like 43% faster in, in Cyberpunk, for example. Now, if you wanna know the raw frame rate numbers, we can look at this slide. Still showing the 10% advantage, but not showing as a performance differential, uh, but instead as just the raw frames per second output. And again, we can look at how, how the card is doing because these are, as far as I can tell, native resolution results, 1440p ultra here. So some of them are below 60 FPS, but you would think that with upscaling involved, you would actually uh, you know, get better performance there. And we actually do see some upscaling enabled results here, uh, where we're seeing the ARC B580 compared against the ARC A750 previous generation card claiming a 24% uplift. And looking at the raw frame rate numbers, some of these now show XESS results on both cards, and now we're getting closer to 60 FPS here. However, unfortunately, again, things that could be misleading here. I think most people using XESS at 1440p probably aren't going to be using the performance mode as that's a little bit aggressive of an upscale. And if you check the, uh, you know, uh, workloads and configuration slide at the end, notice that when XESS is uh, enabled, it's in performance mode, not quality mode or balance mode, it's performance mode. So that's definitely something to keep in mind here. That's a pretty aggressive upscale. Uh, also note that this was based on a 14900K system with resizable bar enabled, so we're not looking at CPU bottlenecks. That makes sense for GPU testing, and there's no indication that anything here is being held back by that. And they also show the driver versions that were being used, and the testing was done in November. Anyway, so, so that's kind of the, the, the caveats on all of that. Now, one thing that I really like here is the VRAM capacity difference. They even have some um, slides highlighting that in a lot of games, either at high settings or high with RT or ultra with RT, um, it, that that a lot of games are, you know, especially stacked up against the eight gigabyte 4060, the B580, as you increase these graphics settings, um, you're noticing that the B580 goes from uh, actually being slower than the 4060 to faster and then significantly faster than the 4060. Again, because the 4060 is choking on its eight gigabytes of VRAM. So again, I absolutely love 
that we're getting more than eight gigabytes of VRAM here on both, even the 570 will get the 10 gigabytes of VRAM, which is great. However, again, that does call into question if your 10% faster is gonna hold up uh, in some of these games that maybe are going over uh, eight gigabytes of VRAM. What if you tested at high settings instead of ultra, for example? Or what if you use DLSS quality and high settings, which might be how somebody would actually use a 4060 on a 1440p monitor. And then I'm wondering if some of that um, performance differential evaporates. That doesn't mean that uh, you know it might not be faster still, but, but how much of this is VRAM related? And VRAM is a real advantage. Again, I absolutely love that. But again, when you're looking at first party slides, you might be looking at best case scenarios. Because again, notice when they kept compared against their own A750, uh, they did allow XESS in a lot of the testing, whereas they're not using upscaling uh, when they're comparing against competition like the 4060. You know, part of that makes sense because different upscalers have different image quality results and they even name things differently now with, with Intel's upscalers. So anyway, there's a lot of that. Uh, speaking of upscalers though, that's the other exciting thing um, uh, that we have here, which is they're mentioning XESS 2. Now, as far as I can tell, they're not claiming any increases to the super resolution technology, the upscaling, but notice they're now uh, targeting feature parity with AMD and Nvidia with a frame generation technology. Although as far as I can tell, their frame generation is not gonna be like FSR's frame generation where it uh, can work on other brands of GPUs. It seems to be uh, only for their Intel hardware. And uh, in addition to adding frame generation, they're now offering a low latency technology to help uh, increase the responsiveness of games, especially if you are using frame generation that might be kind of necessary. They have some slides about how this works. As far as I can tell, it seems like it's basically the same thing that we're getting out of the um, uh, out of the competitor technologies. So we'll have to see how the image quality holds up, but at least on paper, it looks to be similar to what we're getting out of like DLSS frame generation, for example. Uh, they're also showing some performance numbers of native versus XESS versus XESS2. Keep in mind that XESS2 uh, is using that frame generation technology. So what we can kind of read out of this is it does look like the frame generation, like it does with the other GPU brands, does take a bit of a hit to the uh, actual frames the game is rendering, but then doubles it from there. So you're overall not doubling the... the um, uh, you're not doubling the upscaled uh, performance um, when you kick on the frame generation because there's a bit of a performance hit and then it doubles, if that makes sense. In other words, this all looks very similar to what you should be used to from the other brands' frame generation technologies. Also, the low latency technology, if you look into it, does look very similar to what uh, uh, NVIDIA is offering with NVIDIA's Reflex, and it does look like that does require a game integration like NVIDIA's Reflex and AMD's, um, uh, uh, what is it called? Uh, their, their low latency thing, I'm forget spacing out the name uh, right now, but Anti-Leg 2, there we go, Anti-Leg 2. Whereas like AMD, which has the Anti-Leg uh, anti 1 at the driver level, it uh, does look like NVIDIA, sorry, Intel is also gonna be offering a driver level low latency mode, uh, which uh, again, shouldn't be as effective as a game integrated one. Uh, but again, looking like they're trying to go for feature parity with all of the other brands, and they are giving some claims to the responsiveness improvements and all of that. But again, this is first party t testing. We'll have to you know, uh, see what actually uh, comes out of that. They also have their driver low latency mode kind of explained uh, on a chart. Again, seems very similar to what AMD does with their anti leg at the driver level, and they've got some games listed as coming with XESS 2 support. Again, lots of games with XESS 1 support, but those won't get that frame generation technology. Uh, but there you go, there's some actual claimed games here. Uh, also, uh, they're talking about reaching feature parity on a bunch of the graphics software, including um, having more display settings like scaling modes and things like that. Uh, uh, available within the driver, which is nice to see, again, reaching feature parity with some of the other brands, um, uh, offering a driver level FPS limiter and low latency mode and performance and overclocking controls, including an FPS counter uh, added in through the driver software. So all of these are great. It looks like they're really targeting feature parity with all of the other brands. Um, so anyway, what do I make out of all of this that I haven't already said? Well, the last thing I want to mention is that, well, they're comparing against eight gigabyte cards from AMD and Nvidia, and that's totally fair based on the latest generation. We also need to acknowledge that when I'm recommending a $300 or less graphics card, 
I've often been recommending the uh, 6750 XT, which at least in the United States has still been available around $300. Now supply on that is kind of drying up, but you know, around Black Friday, I even saw them going as low as 270. So that's still more expensive. But if we look at the overall kind of, you know, if we want to speculate on our performance levels and things like that, Again, they're claiming 10% faster than a 4060, but as I mentioned, I wonder if some of that gap is going to disappear uh, if you're tuning the graphic settings to not go over eight gigabytes of VRAM. So I might view that 10% better as like a best case scenario. Uh, and that only puts you uh, into 6700 XT ter territory and maybe a little bit slower than a 6750 XT. Um, so that's a bit interesting because we've those are 12 gigabyte graphics cards that we've already had access to in, in uh, you know a higher price range than Intel's targeting here. But again, time moves on. You'd want better performance per dollar. So there's that. Uh, there's also the 7600 XT from AMD uh, coming in at what might end up being similar performance overall, especially if the 10% is kind of a best case scenario. If it ended up being more like 5%. Then you're hitting 7600 XT levels of performance. And again, 7600 XTs, let's see what they're priced right now if I wanted to buy one today uh, in the United States. That's uh, XT, there we go. Uh, looks like those are about 315. So again, if they're offering that performance with 12 gigabytes of VRAM, I don't think 16 is necessary at this performance tier, uh, but at $250, I mean, there really is something to be said for this. So I'm hoping uh, that the overall uh, you know, performance numbers do pan out. Because um, again, they're claiming a, a best in class performance per dollar and that would be absolutely great to see. And I again, absolutely love that we're getting higher VRAM capacities in price ranges uh, that people actually wanna buy. And so we'll have to see what comes next generation from AMD and Nvidia, but if they're still offering eight gigabyte cards at this performance and price tier, uh, and, and Intel's coming in with uh, affordable cards with 10 or 12 gigabytes of VRAM and a really complete looking feature set with their XESS technologies. Because um, again, I think XESS upscaling looks better than AMD's FSR, for example. Now, now that kind of leaves, okay, is AMD gonna start reaching that kind of feature parity and what are they gonna offer? We're also seeing uh, AMD confirming a uh, CES announcement of next generation hardware. So that's where we will likely get some more information coming in uh, from uh, AMD regarding their um, their next generation of graphics cards. And again, we expect AMD to be having an AI-based FSR upscaler. Whether we hear about that now and ready in time for this generation, we'll have to see, because uh, you know Intel did get to that first. And again, we have to see how that ray tracing plays out, all of that. Hopefully you guys found this video useful and or interesting. I'm excited to test the uh, test these things out and get, a, uh, get you guys a review out there. Let me know what you would want tested in an Intel Arc review. Um, when I'm looking at this, uh, what kinds of settings, what kind of games, let me know your thoughts in the comment section. I hope all of you have an excellent day.